this is the first tutorial for the assignment 2. Although your assignment 1 is not, not due yet, we will start the assignment 2 tutorial series because we have a lot of topics to cover. In the schedule, in the tutorial page, you can see the schedule. In this tutorial, I will go through the UI design part of the, of the assignment and then I will go, go through the, the other stuff about the front-end development because you will need to use some other API to support your, uh, so your page. And then I will move to back-end development. In this assignment, you will not use Python, you will not use CJ anymore. You will use uh, Node.js and, and Express to develop your, your web application. And then I will also go through some useful libraries for your assignments, which is WebSocket and actually Socket IO is the, uh, is the library for, for the main function of your assignment. And I will also introduce REST, RESTful APIs and also something about remote debugging. And, and the assignment will be due, uh, I think, in before the last teaching week. So, so you have, in, I think you will have enough time to finish your assignment. And in the last week, I didn't decide the tutorial topics yet. So I will update it later. Oh, okay, so this tutorial will go through the UI design parts of the assignment. So I will introduce what is responsive web design. And this is today's online. And I will first talk about what is mobile web development. So in assignment two, we will build a mobile web app, which is called YouTube Remote. And I will do the demo. I will provide more details about these assignments later. So this is the UI of the of the assignment. So this is a YouTube remote. First of all, I need to add some videos, and I find some interesting videos here. Yeah. Okay. I I need to I need the ID. Okay. So I add a new video, and you can see that the video is inserted into the playlist. And when I click on it, I can play the video. This is on YouTube. And I can also control the playback of the videos. I can fast forward and find more. Oh, offering. Hey, hey. Yeah. So I can find more here. And I also I can also use a mobile phone to control the playback. Playback. And I can go to the same page. And then I have the UI in my mobile phone. I will show you the UI later. And I can use my phone to control the playback. I can pause, I can play, and uh, fast forward. Yeah, so this is the main idea of assignment two. The idea is very simple, but this is also very interesting to, to implement this, uh, this assignment. And today I will cover cover the UI design parts of this assignment. So this is the desktop view and I can have a mobile view because when you use a mobile phone to display this page then the the, the resolution is, is a lot lower so I will I need to do some adjustments to the to the UI. Let's say I have an iPhone 6 so the UI is like this. This is the mobile view of the of of the applications. And I can also have a tablet view. I can expand the view. And this is the tablet view. You can see something different in, in the button. You can see the, the label here. Um, and of course, the last one is the desktop view, which also include the YouTube player. So this is the main idea. And in this assignment, we will go Oh, oh, what's happened? Uh, let me close this one. Okay, so so this is the outline, and we will also use Heroku. We will not use Docker anymore, although you can still use it for your development. But we will deploy your app in Heroku. So you need to app to register an account on Heroku first. And uh, as a matter of fact, we are using the main stack. What is main stack? Min is MongoDB, the database path, and Yi is Express, the framework, the web framework. 
and A is AngularJS, but we will not use AngularJS because it's, this is not easy to teach. We will instead use React.js or Backbone.js for the front-end developments. And the N stands for Node.js. And what, what, is a, what are the difference between developing, develop, developing a web page for desktop and developing for mobile devices? There are some differences here. So first of all, we need to work with some small screens. And this can be solved by using responsive web design, which is which will be taught in this tutorial. And we also need to work with touch screens because the, you don't have a mouse on your mobile phone, so you need to work with the touch screen. And, and uh, you can solve this by using a DOM touch events, which is introduced uh, in, in Western years. And you also need to optimize the images because the, the, uh, the resolution of your mobile phones is usually larger than your notebook, I don't know why. Uh, because your, your mobile phone is always, some mobile phones is already using 4K screens, but your desktop, um, um, most, uh, in more, ca more cases, you won't use a 4K screen for your desktop or your laptop. So you need to optimize the images for the mobile devices so it can be shown uh, clearly for the images. And the last part is about the mobile APIs because the mobile phone enables some new APIs for you, such as the orientation part and geolocation part. So you need to you can work with these these differences to develop some interesting mobile applications in your in your browser. So we will go through them one by one later. And before I go into the UI design part, I will first introduce a very useful library for you. So this is called Font Awesome, and let me show you the, the, the home page. So this is the home page of Font Awesome. So you can see some icons is flowing here. So you can guess what are the formats of these icons. You can see some many icons here and also in the contents. So let's see what is the format. Use inspect anyone. So this is oh, let's use another. Use this one. Okay, this one. This is the i tag. And let's see the CSS. Okay, uh, where's it? Ah, it's here. You can see something like that. It set up the contents for this tag. The tag is like this. This is a, 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 a character, a Unicode character. But why the Unicode character is translated into this icon? Because it is a font. Let us go up. Uh, uh, is here. The font is called Font Awesome. Here. So this is a library for displaying displaying icon using a font. Because this is a font, it can be scaled up and down without losing the qualities. Uh, because this is a vector graphics, and and this is very easy to use and also perfect on retina screens. And you don't need to use any JavaScript for using this library, only CSS. It is pure CSS. And to use it, you only need to include this line into your web page, and then you can use it. So I'm using the Bootstrap CDN. CDN stands for Content Delivery Network. And so this is the example page. So let, let, let's read the code. First of all, I need to include the library to the web page, and then I can use the icon by using the i tag and set up the class, the CSS class of this tag. First of all, you need to write FA. FA stands for Font Awesome. By using this tag, you can uh, you can uh, specify the font you want to use, 
and then I want to use the smile icon. So I put FA and then uh, minus my smile minus O. And I can get this smile icon. And also some others, uh, you can write exclamation circle to get this one and also thumbs up for this one. And you can even change the color because this is a font, so you can do anything on 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 the on the test. So in this example, you you can see that you just need to insert the following codes at the desired position for using the icons. So you use the i tag and then class fa and then fa minus and then the icon name. So where can you find the icon name? Just go to this page. Go to this page and then find icons. So now there should have uh, how many icons are there? Uh, yeah, now it has six, 600 something icons here. You can choose any one of them here to, 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 to improve the, the UI of your web page. You can even use this in assignment one if you want to. So there are a lot of icons you can choose from and this is the icon and then this is the name. You can even click on it to see different size of the icons. This is for your preview. And, and when you look into the assignment uh, look into the UI design of assignment two, you will notice that I use a lot of the playback icons for the remote control part. This is very useful for, for your development, especially in assignment 2. And even more crazier, you can add some animation to the icons. Again, it is using CSS, not JavaScript. CSS3 has, has added a feature for animation. So let me find, yeah, here. So you can make these, these types of animated icons by using different classes. So the first one is using FA minus Binner and then FA and then icon name. So you can get this icon. You can do uh, do the same thing on other icons. And uh, oh, this is the icon name and this is the animation class for, for making it moving. Okay. And you can also do other things on the icons. You can you can find the details in this page, the example page. Okay, so that's it for font awesome. Okay, the next part is really about the web web design, the UI design part. So this is called responsive web design. So what it is? So first of all, I want to ask you how many smart devices do you have? You may have the notebook and also have the smartphones or, or multiple smartphones, I don't know. And you have a tablet or multiple tablets. So you have a lot of smart devices. So when you, when you want to uh, design a web page for these devices, you may notice that the risk resolution of all these devices are different. A difference. So for example, you may have an iPhone 4 and iPhone 6 and then the resolution is already different. The size is different, the screen width is, is, is different. So when you design a web page for these devices, you need to, uh, you need to uh, 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 carefully design the UI so that the UI will not look so different in different devices. So and um, but some some websites just give up. Let's see some example in CUHK. I think you always go to this page. If you are using a mobile phone to visit this page, then then you first need to find where is the login box. So this is login box, and then you click on the test test box, and then it zoom in. So every time you, when you want to log in ELG Wave, you need to zoom in and then type your password, which is which is uh, bad for the user experience. And this, this one is even more terrible. The CUHK Wi-Fi. 
first of all, you have a lot of things and you never win it. You find the agree button and click on it and go to the login page. But still you can't log in because the test is so small. So you need to click on the test box and then zoom in to type your password. So this one is also not a good design in terms of the user experience because you need to do a lot of steps to do the login. So this is bad. So how can we solve this problem? So in recent years, um, some developers uh, uh, propose, a, propose a new approach for web design, which is responsive web design, RWD, which is a combination of fluid proportion-based quiz and flexible images and CSS free media queries and extension of ad media. And I will go through them later. So there are some good examples. The first one is of course our course homepage. If you are so so hardworking that you use your mobile phone to visit this page, you will notice that the, this, the UI is a, a little bit different when you use your phone to visit this page. So this is to accommodate the device width so the contents can be shown in a, a, in a clear manner. So this is a, the, the UI of the mobile, mobile version. And also the tutorial page is also web responsive. It accommodates for the device width. And also the CUHK page. The home page of CUHK is also responsive. I just noticed that in, in a few days ago. I can zoom in, I can reduce the device width and it becomes like this. So the contents are reorganized so as to accommodate the device width. And the menu is also collapsed into this, this, uh, this mobile version menu. So when I expand, then the menu come back again. So this is the idea of responsive web design. We have a different UI for the mobile, mobile uh, version and a different UI for the desktop version. So how can I do this? In when this idea is not proposed, uh, the web developers def uh, just develop two versions of the same page. So they have two different HTML, HTML files and they need to maintain two different files when they need to update the contents. But this approach is not doing this again. This is to develop only one web page, one HTML page, but use the CSS to, re to reorganize the contents. So the idea is called CSS Media Queries. It is a new feature in the CSS3, and it consists of a media type, and also an, at least one expression to limit the style, style sheet score by using media features like the width, the height, or the color. By using media queries, you can let the presentation of the content to be tailored for different, uh, different devices without having to change the content itself. So you don't need to, to do anything to the HTML page. Just do the adjustment in your CSS file. Before using this feature, you need to specify the view post. So this is the HTML tag for specifying the view post. The view post means the web mean uh, how the web page is tips, is displayed on the mobile device. So using this meta tag, the content is width equal to device width. This is to tell the browser that your web page, your web page width is equal to the device width. Because otherwise, your phone will assume that your page is for the desktop, and then it will, it will zoom out of your page, and and the text will be, will be uh, extremely small. So you need to specify the view part first, and then, let's see an example. Uh, it's here. Okay, this page. So this is a very simple web page. I have a sidebar and then the contents here. 
So this is a desktop view. Let's see the mobile view. You can do. There are two ways to change into mobile view. The first one is resize your window, and the second way is to use the Chrome Development Tool. You can click on this button, this button here, and then it will go in goes into this mode. And I can select different model again. I use iPhone six. This is a bit small. And the sidebar disappear, and then I can enlarge, and the sidebar goes to the top of the web page, and then I, I expand again and go back to the desktop view. So how to do this? Let's see the HTML first. The HTML is is uh, here sidebar HTML. Very simple. I add a meta tag so that I specify the viewport of this web page. And in the body, there are only two EIV tags here, which is for the sidebar and also the contents. This is nothing special. Let's see the CSS. Demo.c. No, not this one. Sidebar.css. Okay, so this is the CSS. The first few lines you should uh, be able to understand them because we teach CSS in the first tutorial. So I set the I hide the sidebar by using display equal to none, and then the content is like this. And you see a new tag here: add media and then screen and mean width equal to six, 600 pixels and inside this this uh, this broadcast you find the sidebar uh, CSS again it set up the sidebar so that it can be displayed in this mode and I add a border and the width is 100% and the background color is, is like this and when I look down uh, the there's again the sidebar definition for the CSS. So basically what this line is doing. This line is to control how when should I apply this CSS to the to my web page. So this is actually very easy to understand. Uh, when the display is on the screen and then the width is the minimum width is equal to six hundred pixels. That means when the when the device width is larger than 600 pixels, then I apply this set of CSS. When the screen is even larger, when the width is larger than 800, uh, 800 pixels, then I apply this set of CSS again. So by using this at media QEs here, I can control which set of CSS I can I apply to my web page. Okay, so you can read this page yourself. I already explained them. So the main idea is using add media and then uh, an expression here to control when should I apply this CSS to my web page. And there are a lot more to explore. You can go to this page. There are different expressions for controlling when to apply the CSS. Uh, for example, you can you can apply and CSS when the device aspect ratio is let's say one let's say this one or you can even set up the resolution and the width or the height of the device. There are many different expressions for you to use. So you, you can explore this page if you want to de um, define uh, more sophisticated rules for the CSS. And I have another example, demo.html. This one is playing with CSS media QEs. I can do the demo first. Q 
keep resize it and the background color keep changing okay and let's see the XML whoa a lot of CIV tag here but not all of them will be shown in the web page so I control it in demo.css for each device width I define a different CSS so I have a lot of CSS here so as to change the, the background color of the web page and also the text like this so this is an uh, uh, an extreme example of using the media kiwis and you can uh, read this read the code to see how I do this it is very easy to understand and to to debug to do debugging for media kiwis you can use the Chrome development tools it can help you to set up different help you set up the resolution uh, the, the, the width and the height of different devices for example you can use a uh, Nessus 4 device width and height to test your web page to see how it, how your web page is shown on your on your Nessus 4 phone so this is very useful and now let's move to push app because if you if you need to define the CSS for for different media uh, for different de devices, then it's just too troublesome. And we have a very useful framework for developing responsive web pages. Bootstrap. I think some of you already know how to use it. So it is a front end HTML and CSS and JavaScript framework developed developed by Twitter. And since version 3.0, it adopted a mobile first design philosophy. That means that the web page design is always always put your mobile phone in the first priority and then you optimize the layout so that it can be shown on the desktop. So you always design for your phone first and then to the desktop. And again, uh, it uses CSS media queries to do the adjustment. And it also includes a collection of JavaScript plugins to for for some for most of the web apps it will be useful. And the example is of course its homepage. Uh, the course homepage is also using push app. Uh, web page. The homepage of push app is like this. It is responsive this it can adjust its content according to the device width and the menu is here when I expand it the menu goes to here okay and also the, the official site of Forge Awesome is also using Bootstrap and how to use it again this is very simple you just need to use the CDN of Bootstrap by including this line first you include the CSS for the or bootstrap and this is optional this is to apply an addition uh, theme to, to your web page this is not required and if you want to use the bootstrap plugin the javascript plugin then you also need to include the javascript here this is the most convenient way of using bootstrap and if you want to use uh, if you want to download the, the source code to your to your own computer, it's also okay by downloading the archive, the zip file uh, in this page, get started. You can find different version here. By downloading to your own computer, you can do some uh, adjustment to the CSS or the JavaScript. And to use it, you need to follow the following rules. First of all, you need to specify that uh, I'm using the HTML5 doc type. So I need this line here. And then again, I need to include a viewport of the web page. So I can specify the device width. And 
I need to include a CSS file here. And inside the body, I will put all my contents inside this div. So the class is either container fluid or a container. Let's see the difference. Okay, let me find my example page right here. Okay, so the top one is using the class container, the container class, and the second one is using the container fluid class. You can see that the width of these two class is different. The container class is a fixed width container. It does not expand when if your screen is even larger than than its specified width. Okay, switch to other mode so you can see it clear. Actually, in the mobile view, the container width is will it usually not using the full width of your device, but the container fluid class will always use the full width of your device. So this is the main difference. If I keep expanding it, the container div will not expand, but the container fluid it will always fill up the width of the device. So this is the main difference. So you can choose from these two cards when you are de designing your web page. And to do responsive design, in Bootstrap it introduces a grid system. The grid system divide, uh, divides the whole web page into 12 columns. And, and by putting your contents into these columns, you can do responsive uh, 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 adjustment when the device width changes. So let's see some example first. Okay, the width system. So I just put all my contents into the columns. I can put uh, uh, each row it has 12 columns, so I have 12 columns to put my contents inside. You can use uh, one column to put something here and then another column for another things. Or you can use 8 columns to put your contents, let's say your YouTube player in assignment 2 here and then your remote control here. You can choose how many columns you want to use to put your contents. So there are different version. Okay, so first of all, you divide your contents into different, uh, into different columns, and the second part is to decide, to, to decide that when, how do you want this column to be displayed in different different devices? And let's see example first. Okay, this is a desktop view. All the columns are shown properly, but when I use a smaller device, let's say iPhone 5, let's read from the bottom. The columns are, the layout of the columns change. It becomes stacked. It looks like a stack here. It rearranges your contents into a, into a stack. So this, this one is column minus LG minus and the star. The star is how many columns you want to use. And MD version is like this. And SM version is like this. And the last one is XS. You can see that the column is still showing in is still in in different columns here. Expand it. Okay, the column is still shown in this mode. But in the SMO, the columns become staggered. So why are why are the difference in in the display? This is because Bootstrap defines four device sizes. Access for extra small device like your mobile phones, the width the device width is uh, smaller than say 
700 something. And then the small device, SM, SMO, and then the MD, medium device, and then the large device, which is desktop. So both chef define these device sizes for displaying your web page. And you can choose from these different device size to control your display. So for example, if I want to if I want to have eight columns in in the extra small device, then I use the XS class and the column is called the class is column minus XS and then the column size. So like this one. Then my then this part will be displayed in in eight columns and four columns when the device width is equal or larger than the extra small device, which is this one. So if I am using a phone, then the column will be shown in then the then this part will be shown in eight columns and then four columns. And if I am using a small device, it will also use this layout, the same layout, eight column and then four columns. And of course, for desktop view, it will also shown in eight column and four columns. So XS means that when the device width is equal or larger than that, then apply this CSS. Otherwise, the columns will be stacked. For example, if I use column minus M, D minus H, then when the device width is XS or SM, then the device width, uh, then the column will be stacked. So you can find the example here. Let's say I use a larger size, then the XS is still in, in 12 columns, and SM is also in 12 columns because I'm now the device width is now SM, but the MD pass is stacked because the device width is smaller than MD and also the LG. So by using different CSS class, you can control the layout of, of your contents. And you need to put your columns into a row, a class called row. This is used to define a row of your, of your web page. Okay, and I will already show you this part, this example. And another example is to is to redesign the ELG Wave portal login. Okay, this is the original version, not responsive. And if you are using a phone, then the layout it will properly like like this. Let me switch to the mobile world view. Okay, the wheel is like this, very small text, and then you need to zoom in to log in. This is the non-responsive version. And I make a responsive version. Okay, if I use a phone, then the login box and also the terms are rearranged so that it can show in your, your phone properly. And when I resize, the login box also resize and when the width is large when the device width is large enough to show both box in the same column then they can be shown in the same column I can keep resizing it so this is the responsive version of ELG Wave portal login and the code actually I'm using push app I put all the things in the container div and then I rearrange the contents. The login box is using uh, using six columns to display, and the terms is using another six columns to display. So by using the Bootstrap CSS, the Bootstrap framework, I can rearrange the contents properly. So in assignment two, you will need this framework to to make your web page responsive. And actually, in Bootstrap, there are some other stuff for responsive display. And you can read the documentation yourself to see how to use them. 
and some bonus materials for bootstrap. Okay, so the bootstrap UI is quite standard. You can find many web page is using it, and you may not want your web page to look exactly the same with another page. So someone introduced uh, different different uh, theme for the bootstrap. So I like this page very much. Boot boot watch. So they provide a lot of CSS theme for bootstrap. The usage is still the same, but they adjust the layout a, a little bit. So the maybe the color is different. The text is different. The color scheme is different. Actually, this is the 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 theme that my tutorial page is using, the paper theme, and you can you can choose one of them for 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 your assignments. You can change the layout like this, so that the the layout of your web page will look will look not so standard with the bootstrap original version. And you can even use another CSS framework. This is also very popular, Foundation. Foundation CSS. Okay, this is the web page. And you can find the documentation here. Okay. And some example, the first example is my web page. Okay, this is using foundation and another page. This is out of my expectation. If you are sick, you need to see the doctor and you will need to go to this page and then I find that, oh, the layout is redesigned. It is using foundation and this is out of my expectation. It is responsive and it relies on the foundation framework for the responsive display. How do I know this? I just search foundation and find find something like this. So I think they are using foundation for, for for their design. And another bonus material. If you like animation, you can use this uh, CSS. By applying different CSS class to your web page, you can have different animation. You can bounce and uh, flash. Okay, this this is the demo of the of the animation. And bouncing down like this. Okay, if you want to use it, then then just include the CSS into a web page and and it's done. You don't need to do any JavaScript or 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 customize CSS. Just need to include this CSS file and then you can use the animation. Very simple to use. And the last part is jQuery, but the tutorial time is is almost up, so I will quickly go through this. Actually, I don't want to go through them one by one because the API, the, the documentation is already very good. So there are lots of different functions, and in the lecture you are you are learning how to use document dot get element by ID to to obtain an DOM object. But in jQuery, I just need to use the dollar sign to get an object. Maybe I show uh, an example first. Uh, I don't know if this page is using jQuery. Uh, yeah, it's using jQuery. Then let's do the demo on this page. Let's delete more photos. Let's see. Okay. So most photo is in this tag. IMG and then ID equals to my photo. Now I'm going to use jQuery to remove this photo. So I switch to the console. And then I type dollar sign. Dollar sign means to call a jQuery function. And then put the selector here, the CSS selector to select the Tag. The text ID is photo underscore uh, no. my 
my photo. So by using this function, I call this dollar sign function. Then I can get the DOM object of the photo. Now I remove it. So I call a function on this object. Remove. It's gone. Okay, so this is jQuery. If you don't use jQuery, then you need to call document get element by ID and then and then uh, uh, my photo and then dot remove node or something like that. I don't remember because I used jQuery for many years and I already forget everything about the J JavaScript version. So I always use jQuery for JavaScript developments because it simplifies many many things for you. You don't need to handle any. Uh, Compatibility problems because the JQ library already handled this for you. So you can read the documentation to see how to use the library. Okay, there are many of them. Okay, so last thing, reminder. So in this assignment, we will use Node.js and Express to implement the backend of assignment 2. So no more CGI, no more Python. We'll use Node.js and Express, and and by using this uh, uh, this framework, then we can use JavaScript in both the front end and back end. And more details will be given in later tutorials. For now, you can install Node.js in your computer first. Uh, the the where's it? Okay, the to the tutorial page. In the tutorial page, I already uploaded the, the guidelines for installing Node.js on Windows, on Linux, or on Mac. But I think you don't need to follow them because this is very easy to install. Just click next and then next and then next, then you can install Node.js. Or an alternative is to use Docker again. Node.js provides an official Docker image for Node.js, so you can use it. So you don't need to install the Node.js on your computer. And also, please register an account on Heroku. Okay, we will deploy our application on Heroku. So please register and oh, why page not found? Okay. So register an account on Heroku, and I will talk about how to deploy an app on this platform later. So this is the end of today's tutorial, so good luck for your assignment one.